This is round 11 of Blackstone Fortress. All right, I'm going to make a new initiative deck here. Uh, I don't know how to do this. I need a card shuffler. Uh, an adjustable size, variable size card shuffler. That's what I want. Okay, so we've got the setup here. We got a um, bottleneck situation by design. The 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 board is absolutely designed for this. I've got Negavolt Cultist uh, coming towards Tadius and Pius Vorn up here at the top, and then along the side uh, corridor, I've got some Urghuls and another Negavolt Cultist coming toward Janus and Amelin. Amelin has not actually jumped into outer space. She's right there. She's in the corridor, and. There's a maglev chamber up here. This is the escape hatch. This is where we need to go. That was imposed upon us by a Blackstone Fortress event. Everything else is good. Some destiny die to roll. Two, four. Oh, nope, not a four. That was a double. Gotta get rid of the four. Ignore the doubles. But a three and a six. That six is looking good. Okay, so unlike last time, I'm going to stop this is the initiative deck we are allowed to look at the initiative deck as i have said before this is simply i, I do it as a deck simply as a safe sa saving a space saving move so i've got a hostile group going first and then tadius the purifier janus drake another hostile group Amelin, and then pius vorn so pius vorn last again Two is the, uh, who's, who, who's two these days? Who's two? Two is the Negavolt cultists. One is the Urghuls. So what, what did I say? The, 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 so basically it's Negavolt cultists first, which could be bad because that, that means this guy will probably attack them. Okay, so Janus Drake can do a free, a free gambit. Yeah, that's just a thing that he does every, whenever he wants. So he got a success, which means that he gets to move in front of the nearest uh, baddie. So that's Negavolt, Tadius, Janus. So that moves Janus Drake up one, which is nice. But to be honest, I don't see him. I, I don't see him doing anything to to the to, to that Negavolt cultist. I see him hitting the Urgul. Because that's just that's where he is, and it's getting crowded uh, uh, over there. So I I don't think he's gonna help Tadius at all. So really, if anyone's gonna do a gambit at this point, I think it needs to be Tadius the Purifier. Yeah, I think it kind of needs to be Tadius the Purifier. Cause yeah. Okay. Um, let's tackle that in a moment. Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, because um. I have to roll dice. So Tadius, of course, has one one wound, some, one grievous wound, so he can't activate his full amount, but he does get a one, five, and a five. That'll be good. Now let's do, it looks like Janus is next in my stack of player cards. He doesn't have any outstanding wounds or anything, so he gets to do his full thing. Wow, two, four, six, six. That's great. Of course, you know, last time he had a bunch of really good rolls as well, and they weren't very good. This is Amelin, three and a four. And then Pius Vorn, she's got one Grievous Wound, so she only gets to activate three times. Oh my goodness, a one and a one and a one. That's not a great roll for Pius <laughs> Vorn. But there's this six over here, you know, it's, it's fine. We have choices to make do we yeah do we want tadius to try a gambit to move in front of the negavolt cultists i think we do so tadius is going to roll his agi oh his agility is a d6 and nobody ever succeeds on a d6 because there's really only um uh, one success and one critical on a d6 four other sides of blankness I, I kind of I feel like I don't want him to sacrifice a an activation for that, and yet I'm going to do it anyway because I really do feel like it would be bad. So he's going to spend his one to do an agility roll on this d6. 
which I don't know how that's going to... Nope, it's a fail. That's what I figured. Okay, so that was a waste. Um, of course, there is that ship ability of Taddeus's and Pius of Orne's where they can grant everyone the ability to do a gambit without having to spend an activation die. But now I feel like it's wasted because I just wasted one of his die. And it's a question of how badly I want them to... Let's just go for it. Let's go for it. We're feeling, we're feeling reckless. The Negavolt cultists are going to attack. And we'll just see what happens. We'll just see what happens. All right. Janus Drake is first. So he'll... Well, he doesn't have to move. He's just going to hit against these. So he's got a pretty good array of dice to choose from. A 6-6 six, six, and a 4 and a 2. With his four and his sixes, he can do a flurry of attacks on that guy up there in the front. So I'm going to spend, uh, I guess, a four first. No, you know what? I'm going to spend a six first. Spend a six first so that he takes three attacks with his rapier against that adjacent ghoul. That just makes sense to me. So he's going to do three attacks. Just dropped a dice. It's going to take me forever to get that dice. That did not take me forever. Okay, so he gets to do... So it's a one, so he gets to do a d8. And this is three attacks. So I guess I'll roll two and then one, because that's how many dice I have. So that's one success, uh, which is a wound. I'll just put that there for a minute. One wound, and then, oop, <laughs> um, that was a fail. I, I almost rolled two, that's why I panicked, tried to stop myself, and then ended up just throwing the dice across the table. Okay, so that's one wound for the, the ghoul, and then I'm going to spend, um, let's spend a four for another attack. But it'll be two attacks. And so that'll be two d8s. I'm hoping for one success. I got one success. So that is an Ooh, another ghoul down. Oh, you know what? I forgot to roll for inspiration. I don't think it'll matter. But um, so he just killed something with two wounds. So if he rolls a one or a two, he gets more inspiration. He rolled a 20. Amelin did the same thing last turn, so if she rolls a 1 or a 2, she didn't. And then he did the same thing last time, so if he rolls a 1 or a 2, and he didn't. Okay. Nobody's inspired. Alright, that's fine. Uh, okay, so he killed one ghoul, and he still has a 6 and a 2 left. So the way I figure he would just advance with his 2, and then attack with his 6, which is 3 attacks again. So... Here's two misses, and then just one for the third attack, and another miss. And he could roll... Well, he could spend his inspiration point to re-roll, but I'm not going to. And I, th I guess that's his turn. Yeah, I think that's, that's it. Next up is, of course, the Negavolt cultists, which we knew that. They were up here. They went over there. I roll for them to do something. I assume they're going to attack. And it is an 11. So let's go to the attacking, the combat rules. No, not the combat rules. What am I talking about? We go to their card to see what they do on 11. Uh, so 11, they're not engaged. They're not adjacent. No, they are adjacent. So they do an onslaught. That's not good. I think that's really actually quite bad. If I recall, an onslaught is like lots of attacks or something. Onslaught. Attack the closest explorer in range and visible. Then attack the closest explorer that is in range and, visi and visible in this, to, to this hostile. It might be the same. Uh, it can be a different or the same target. Okay, so yeah, they do two attacks, pretty much. It's just two attacks. But... This hostile only ha is only melee. There is no adjacent. Yeah, there's no adjacent target. So I think I somehow lucked out. 
Well, I mean, that's why I didn't belabor the gambit. I really, I, I just kind of felt like these Negavolt cultists, while, while really dangerous, if they get close enough to, 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 to electrocute you, as, as things are, from far away, they're not that bad. So, yeah, okay. Next up is Taddeus. He's only got his two activation, or his two, yeah, his two activations left, because he spent one on that gambit. Uh, but they're both pretty high, so at five he can do a a double attack with his servo stubber. That's the little machine gun he he carries around. Uh, a servo skull carries around for him. With one five he can do two attacks with that. So I'll I'll spend one five and he gets to roll his servo stu stubber, which is two d8s, because he's one two hexes away. And he got two misses. Wow, what a surprise. And then another five. Doing the same thing. Hopefully not exactly the same thing. There we go. There's a critical. Is that in... Yeah, that's that's in view. Critical. I think that kills the Negavolt cultist. Because I'm pretty sure they only have two wounds. Yeah, they do. So that one is dead. That's great. Um, So that's two wounds worth of carnage. Meaning that he gets to roll a blackstone dice and ideally get a one or a two but he got a one and a two as it were he got a 12 so he is not inspired by this at all he's just this is all this is business as usual for Taddeus. that's not inspiring he could move at this point and i'm kind of inclined to get him to move just because of this this bottleneck needs to come to an end is it smart to spend like a two on a move maybe not but you know like maybe it is he only gets to move two spaces, too, so... Uh, one, two, there. He's a little bit... It's a little bit less of a bottleneck now. And now I think it's the baddies again. Yeah, the Urghuls. So this will be interesting to see what they get up to. Oh, and you know what? I forgot to roll for reinforcements for the Negavolt cultists, because they did... They were one, one cultist down. So 16, nothing happens. That's fine. And now it's the Urghul turn, so now I need to roll again for reinforcements for the Urghuls. 18, that's fine. You need to roll really low for reinforcements to show up, a little bit like <laughs> inspiration. All right, Urghul, uh, let's roll for their action. Oh, tier 2 is usually bad. So they're engaged. Oh, it's engaged, so he's going to fall back. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, so the Urghuls, whilst engaged, fall back. Well, he's the only guy left, so naturally he would fall back. Actually, this makes a lot of sense in a in a lore from a from a storytelling standpoint. Okay, so falling back is I know it's double the hostile's move value, and they make a move that ends that's not visible to the explorer. That's their goal. So I think Urgul's move three? Yeah, three. So it's one, two, three. So there it's not visible to anyone now. But it did say double the move value. So I guess one, two or two one, two, three. So he's he's not in not in view of any of the explorers now, so that's that's his turn. That's an annoying turn. I mean, it's a fallback action, and you kind of feel like you feel like it's a retreat, but it's not really a retreat. It's setting you up for an attack later on. All right, um, I mean, we can all learn from that, you know, like that that looks like a retreat on paper, but it is not. Okay, Amelin. Well, she's ranged. She's a ranged attacker. She moves three, and she's got a three and a four to spend. I kind of want her to just get out there and start taking shots at people. This guy makes me nervous. She's already got two criticals, true grievous wounds. But, you know, we're here. We're here to fight. That's what we're here for. So I'm going to just say that she's going to spend her three to move three. One, two, three. Spend her four to move three. One, two. Wait, is that smart? One, two, three. I don't want her to move adjacent. 
one, two, three, yeah, adjacent to uh, an enemy. So one, two, three. And then I'm going to have her spend the six on the destiny die to do something useful, which uh, in this case is a phase crystal. No, is that what, is that? No. Oh, that's, I forgot about her phase crystal, actually. That could be really good, but I don't think that's worth it. No, what I wanted her to do was um, her long rifle attack, but with an aim. But she can't aim because... Oh, no, yeah, she can because, yes, because she's got the scope. Okay, cool. So, on a four or more, so she's spending a six, so she's got a four or more. She can use her rifle and attack as if though she had aimed. So, this creature is a good one, two, three, four. She's, right, four... Uh, actually, this that count that matters. So if he went like one, two, three, one, two, three. So he's really only three hexes away. Okay. I guess she gets to use her rifle with just a d8, and let's hope for the best. Except nope, she misses. Okay, that's too bad. Um, yeah, that's too bad. Oh well, that's how things go. Pius Vorn is up next, and Pius is going to, I guess Pius, I mean, there are not really any enemies in sight. Pius has a bunch of ones, so unsurprisingly, uh, she's going to be doing a lot of moving this this round, and I think, I know that the story that I often have in my head is that Pius sticks close to Tadius. Because in the book, there's a huge scene where she does exactly that. It's like a very memorable scene. But, but I mean, I think Pius is also, you know, we're a team here. So I think she, we've, we've got to do the team player thing. So I'm going to spend a one and just send Pius one, two, three. Spend a one, one, two. You know, I'm, I'm just not clear on whether you have to use up all your movement or whether... You're allowed to move up to your move speed. And I, I never... Let's let's double check that real quick. Because that seems like an important strategic question to have answered. Okay, up to. It's up to. So she doesn't have to move further. She can just stay there. That's what I think I'm going to have her do. And then with her other, her final one, she's going to actually take an attack. She can't, I don't think there's a whole lot she can do, except her flamer at a two, two to three hexes away. She gets to roll a d12. Oh, that's really good. I forgot, I didn't realize it was that good, I don't think. And there's a success. Cool, wow. That was a really great turn for Pius, actually. And yeah, she's done a little bit of damage there. And then there's that three just kind of hanging out there with no one to use it. So let's use it for another thing of the same. I better switch die for superstitious reasons. Oh, I shouldn't have switched dice. Uh, and that's it. That's that round. I think that's, um, that's actually not bad. The board is starting to look okay. Having said that, of course, I need to roll on the event table. Eleven. Isn't that exactly what I got last time? Pretty sure it is. Eleven. Yeah, escape chamber. So if this event has already been rolled, or if an event ha if an explorer has already summoned a maglev, there is no effect. So in this case, there is no effect. That's great. As I have often said, no effect in the Blackstone Fortress is usually better than an effect. That's this round. Thanks for watching.